The law of truth was in his mouth. No dishonesty was found on his lips. He walked with me in integrity and peace and turned many away from evil. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who called the Bishop St. Irenaeus, to confirm through doctrine and peace of the church, grant, we pray, that through his intercession, that being renewed in faith and charity, we may always be intent on fostering unity and concord. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. In the tenth month of the ninth year of Jedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his whole army advanced against Jerusalem and camped around it and built siege walls on every side. The siege of the city continued continued until the 11th year of Zedekiah. On the ninth day of the fourth month, when famine had gripped the city and the people had no more bread, the city walls were breached. Then the king and all the soldiers left the city by night. Through the gate between the two walls that was near the king's garden, since the Chaldeans had the city surrounded, they went in, direct, in the direction of the Arabah. But the Chaldean army pursued the king and overtook him in the desert near Jericho, abandoned by his whole army. The king was therefore arrested and brought to Riblah, to the king of Babylon, who pronounced sentence on him. He had Jedekiah's son slain before his eyes. Then he blinded Jedekiah, bound him with fetters, and had him brought to Babylon. On the seventh day of the fifth month, this was in the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, captain of the bodyguard, came to Jerusalem as the representative of the king of Babylon. He burned the house of the Lord, the palace of the king, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every large building was destroyed by fire. Then the Chaldean troops, who were with the captain of the guard, tore down the walls that surrounded Jerusalem. Then Nebuchadnezzar, captain of the guard, led into exile the last of the people remaining in the city and those who had deserted to the king of Babylon and the last of the artisans. But some of the country's poor, Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, left behind as vine dressers and farmers. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forgot, forget you. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land we hung up our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Though there, though there are captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urge us to be joyous, joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not. If I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And then a leper approached and did him homage and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I will do it, be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See, that you tell no one, but go to yourself, show yourself to the priests, and offer the gift that Moses prescribed, and that will be proof for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Brothers and sisters, we all know that leprosy in the Old Testament was considered more as uncleanness than a disease. And many of us may already know that lepers were not considered part of the society during the time of Jesus. Nobody dares to talk to a leper and nobody dares to touch a leper. Leper would only feel that they were better off as dead Actually, they were considered already as walking or living dead. And lepers were isolated, so to speak, from the community for health reasons. They were also alienated from society because they were seen as spiritually impure. So nobody dares even to talk to the leper. Jesus, in today's gospel, does the unexpected. He talked to the leper. He did not only talk to the leper, he spent time being with the leper. Nagkumustahanay pa sila. Siguro ko may ara pagid brood coffee, nag-coffee pagid na sila. Nangumusta and maybe Jesus also asked, how was your family? How was your friends? Or how do you feel right now? Those basic questions Jesus must also have asked the leper. Brothers and sisters, Jesus, according to the gospel, stretched out his hands and touched the leper. When he touched the leper, the leper was healed from his disease and reclaimed the meaning of life. Jesus, as what I have said earlier, 
spend time with the leper. Jesus talked to the leper face to face. Jesus gave importance and dignity to the leper. Brothers and sisters, leprosy is no longer considered a dreaded disease. Nowadays, leprosy can be treated and cured. But there are so many people who are made feel like that they are lepers. They are still many people who are actually treated like lepers. There are still those who continue to be ignored in the society. In the previous administration, there were so many who were considered as lepers. Kung wala ka na, no? Pulos, patsyon ka lang, pusilon ka lang. EJK. So many. Today, the gospel reminds us that Jesus did not only come to cure. He was not only a healer. His mission was more than just curing and healing people and making people healthy. But instead, the Lord came to accept and take back those who have been rejected by society. The Lord came to touch and give back life's meaning to those who suffer from the periphery. Pope Francis would always invite us to imitate the ways of Jesus. He writes, and I quote, Get close to the marginalized people. Get close to the peripheries. Close the distance until touching them without being afraid to get dirty. And this is the Christian closeness that Jesus showed us concretely when he freed the leper from the impurity of the disease and also from social exclusion. Closeness is so important. And Pope Francis explained that closeness is such an important word and you can't build a community, you can't build a family without closeness. You can't make peace without closeness and you can't do good to others without drawing near. End of quote. Brothers and sisters, Jesus could have said to the leper, be healed, but instead he drew close and touched him. And the moment that Jesus touched the unclean man, he also became unclean according to the Jewish belief. And this is the mystery of Jesus. He takes upon himself our uncleanness and impurities. Brothers and sisters, whether we accept it or not, whether we acknowledge it or not, we are like the leper in today's gospel. All of us, without any exception, we have sinned, we have rejected the Lord, and yet the Lord has forgiven us in the sacrament of reconciliation. We have sinned, Yet the Lord has touched each of us each time we receive his body and blood in the Eucharist. And in a little while on the altar, Jesus will draw near to us. He will close the distance, so to speak. Therefore, let us humbly ask him, Lord, may I not be afraid to draw close to the needy, to the needy who are visible, and to those who have hidden wounds. We pray that like Jesus, we may also learn to touch the lives of others so that we too may help them recover and rediscover the meaning of life. Amen. In curing the leper, Jesus sent him to the priest who had the authority to pronounce his healing and to give him leave to join the community of the Jews 
Let us pray to the Lord for the gift of healing. Father, heal our land. Father, heal our land. May the Lord deliver us from contagious diseases and help medical scientists and doctors to find cure for deadly viruses that cause epidemics. We pray. Father, Father heal, heal our, our land. May humanity pause and consider the effects of rapid development, pollution, wasteful living, and throwaway culture that threaten the health of the planet and the lives of people, we pray. Father, heal our land. May doctors, nurses, and other health practitioners ever become Jesus' heart, hands, and feet in attending to the needs of the sick, the disabled, and those considered as disposable, we pray. Father, Father heal our land. May the leaders of the church and those of the government work hand in hand in attending to the needs of the sick, preparing for emergencies, and protecting the health workers, we pray. Father, Father heal, heal our Lord. land. May Mary, mother of pilgrim humanity, pray for us now and at the hour of our death, and keep us ever close to Jesus, her beloved Son, and the Lord of life, we pray. Father, Father heal, heal our land. God, our Father, we are part of your creation, fragile and vulnerable. We do not have the power of controlling everything. Humble our sinful pride and let us have courage, recourse to you in time of sickness and hardships. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the sacrifice we offer you with joy on the heavenly birthday of Saint Irenaeus bring you glory, O Lord, and instill in us a love of the truth so that we may keep the church's faith inviolate and her unity secure through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. And in your mercy you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle the victory is yours. Through Christ our Lord, therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we with all the hosts of angels Cry out, and without end we acclaim. 
Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the true fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At that time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Patricio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and save from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will 
who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have Jesus. mercy on us. Oh, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Body. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me and I in him bears fruit in plenty. Let us pray. Through these sacred mysteries, we pray, O Lord, give us in your compassion an increase of that faith which brought glory to the Bishop St. Irenaeus as he maintained it even until death. And may the same faith bring us to us who truly follow him, justification in your sight through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our celebration has been offered. Go and glorify the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God.